When you think of excellence, what do you think of? Look how you're dressed. You're such a dick. <laughs> Ew, get away. Oh, come on, baby. Man power go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, okay? 12 Ounce Mouse is the greatest fucking show of all time, okay? Of all time! That's why he's the GOAT! The GOAT! Alright, so, you know, if you haven't seen this shit, like, you might be asking, what the fuck am I looking at? And what you're looking at is a fucking layered story with beautiful animation and hilariously written characters. But the thing for me that really pulls up this show up to the next level is a study of atmosphere. It's okay if you're poor. 30,000 horsepower, 30K HP. Thirty thousand. I heard you the first time. You will hear me every the time. You know, it might not look like it, but this series is genuinely a fully realized vision of recreative work. The ultimate encapsulation of immersion. Eh, uh, Fitz, you should be here. You know me. No, I don't. You're my friend. My head. Alright, but enough with the fancy words. So, a main contributor of the atmosphere is the story and the characters that play within it. The main guy, Mouse Fitzgerald, at first is like your average nihilistic self-absorbed protagonist. It's, you know, it's completely common in these adult shows. You know, your Peter Griffins, your Rick and Mortys, you know. Uh, nothing like crazy. Eh, uh, Fitz, the usual? Yep. That'll be, let's see, $300? Tell you what. But in that first episode, you see the usual life that he leads, you know, drinking, defeatism and such. But eventually you witness what other people do when he isn't around, which is essentially nothing. At least if they aren't concerned by Mouse himself, you know. Liquor and Rhoda just stand around in their bars. Pinnacle Cop and Golden Zoe just fuck around doing nothing. And Shark and Rectangular Businessman, they just fucking talk about Mouse all the time. But the viewer is given just a little bit more than Mouse's, which basically means you get to participate in, you know, the terror and the horror and the, the social aspect of it. You know, you get to see what Mouse's life is like, and you see that even he knows that something's wrong. But most of the time, he doesn't even try to, you know, admit it or do anything wrong. But even whenever the series increases in scope, and you see other characters outside of the usual group come into the series, you're only given just a tiny bit more than Mouse, but even when Mouse directly engages with the villains, rarely does he do anything that gains an advantage or new insight. So pretty much you're just drug into this world and then reminded that you have no allies. You know, people like Rooster just sometimes just act out completely out of character. Licker basically goes from one end right onto the other. Really the only ally, Skillet, is completely intelligible. Also unrelated, but uh, they, for Skillet, they actually use the exact same sound effect as the, uh, the, the denizens from Call of Duty Zombies and fuck those little shits, you know what I mean? So honestly, uh, screw it. You're just left to marinate in the show, and if, if you take the show on a more literal sense, you'd probably argue that the ambiguity of the show is kind of frustrating, and you might get that. There's no answers in sight, but to me, that's the point. You know, there, it, it's not some grand conspiracy with the light at the end of the tunnel, you know. The finale of the show just ends, and it's not really supposed to give you some new character revelation. Instead, it's the experience that you gain by watching the show and absorbing its mood. Oh yeah, and also season three, just it just doesn't count. So, it's not even, it's not even, real basically it's it's, it's kind of worthless honestly